Good morning. I'm Norma with a few thoughts for April the 7th. Now there's so much packed into today's gospel that I'd like to focus just on a few verses. So I'm going to be reading from Mark chapter 10 verses 17 to 22. And as they were setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was shocked, and he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. This is the gospel of Christ. Notice that Jesus always had time to build relationships, whether it was spending a few moments playing with a bunch of kids, or putting aside his travel plans to engage with a young man. Jesus delights in spending time with us. A man comes to Jesus and kneels. It's a sign of respect, and he asks, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now Jesus answers, You know the commandments. As a Jew, he knew and faithfully kept the law since he was a boy. But doing is not enough. You see, prayer or saying the liturgy is not a magical formula to get God to respond according to our desires. God mysteriously works through our spiritual practices to transform us, to bring our hearts into alignment with God's, and to begin to see our needs and worries through God's eyes and respond with his heart. Now, many of us hear the words eternal life and think of life after we die. In Romans 6.23, Paul writes that eternal life is a gift, not something we can earn. So we miss the point if we think that going to church or giving money to a local charity will ensure our ticket into heaven. Now, eternal life has already begun here on earth. Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is inviting the man to live as if God's kingdom has already been fulfilled, untainted by our sin and disobedience, in the hope that God's light will shatter the present darkness of sickness, hatred, and war. Then, these beautiful words, Jesus looked at him, and loved him. Because we are loved, God doesn't want us to settle for a mediocre, unfulfilled life, or wait to die before we can find peace and happiness. We are meant to experience and embody the riches of God's kingdom, starting here on earth. But there is a cost to following Jesus. Jesus tells the man he lacks one thing, he must sell all he has and give the money to the poor. But this he was not willing to do, and he walked away grieving. Yet he must have understood that this attachment to his material wealth would prevent him from ever receiving the one thing his heart truly desired, a life that is free, full of joy and a deep sense of peace. These are the gifts God offers. Now, your attachment may not be to material things, but social status or valued relationships. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of these things, but if we trust them for our happiness, like the young man, we will be left grieving when we lose our source of income or a relationship that is severed. This is the point when Jesus looks on us with love and invites us to experience the fullness of life in him. 
and then to share from the abundance of all we've been blessed with. Please pray with me. Eternal God, with you all things are possible. Equip us to become kingdom builders. In you may we find the joy and peace that the world cannot give. May our hearts be so filled with your light and blessing that it spills over into acts of love and kindness. Amen. May God bless you as we begin this sacred journey through Holy Week, through the darkness and death, into his glorious light and promise of new life.